Hello lovely humans and welcome back to my channel and in today's video we are going to be talking about the do's and don'ts of DIY organization. How's that for alliteration and rhyming? Wow we are starting off this video with a bang. Um, a lot of you guys have been asking for this video since, I don't know, this channel started. How do I organize my DIY? And I'm finally making this video. And while this might not be the spiciest topic we've ever had here on this channel, my hope is that it will help each and every single one of you, regardless of how much DIY you're doing, make your day go that much more smoothly. Because whether it's friends, family, wedding party, or professionals that are setting up for you, the more organized you are, the better. So without further ado, let's just jump right on into it. I kind of came up with a really silly analogy for this, but it works, so bear with me. Putting together your DIY is like putting together a meal kit, like HelloFresh or whatever. It's no, This is not sponsored, but HelloFresh, if you see this, you can call me. Um, where you know the recipe, you know what the plate should look like at the very end, you just need to give them good instructions and pictures to go off of. Because while it may seem easy to you, this recipe lives rent free inside your head. You need to communicate that to another person. So that's kind of how I suggest organizing your DIY. It's like you're writing the recipe. Plus you have the time to be organized ahead of time. You can get all your lists ready to go, take all the photos, do whatever while your family members, friends, wedding planner, whoever's doing that setup for you has a finite amount of time on your wedding day to pull off this design meal. <laughs> I'm gonna roll with that analogy the whole time. This week's freebie is actually a DIY wedding checklist. So if you are considering doing any DIY for your event, I highly recommend checking this out, giving it a download. I've put all of the most common DIYs that I've seen on there and broken it down by period of the day. So it's like the ceremony section, the cocktail hour section, reception, and then a miscellaneous part. So if you're considering doing any DIY, I highly recommend you snag that. That can either serve as the roadmap for the things that you want to do, or as the uh, checklist to cross items off your list, or for setup and teardown on your wedding. It's very, it's a very versatile document. <laughs> and if you missed the little clicky bit, it's going to be in the description box down below. Okay, first section, tabletop items. Like anything that's going on top of a table. I don't know why I went to re-describe that. You got it the first time. That could be, but is not limited to your guest book and gift table, any of your reception tables, anything that might go on top of a bar. You get the point. Now, depending on how much decor you have on these tabletops, there are two different approaches that you can take. One, you could put them all in a handful of bins together to then be separated and put out at each individual reception table or each individual space that they need to go to. Or two, you put everything that's needed for one table in one box. So if you only have a few items like table numbers, favors, etc., that need to go on each tabletop and they're not super specific, you can put those all in one bin together. But if you have a lot of items, a lot of moving parts, uh, or a lot of DIY that you've done for each tabletop, I highly recommend recommend that you put them all in one box together. So everything you need for table one is in the table one box. Everything you need for table two is in the table two box. And if you don't know where you fall on that scale, if you have enough items to fill a box for one table, then this is the approach that you're going to want to take. <laughs> Again, with the lesser item approach, if you don't have that many, you can put them all kind of in one bin together or a handful of bins. I would recommend trying to keep them as themed as possible. So like maybe all the reception stuff together, all the ceremony stuff together, but write down everything that's in that box on a piece of paper and take it to that box. It'll really help your setup crew to uh, know exactly what's in there. It's immediately identifiable, so they don't have to go rummaging through to see if it's in that box or not. Clear totes are super awesome because it makes visibility even better, but if you don't have those, don't go out of your way to buy them, okay? Now on the opposite end of things, if you are doing your own build your centerpiece kit, I recommend instead <laughs> using these kinds of boxes. <laughs> this one's seen better days. Okay, this is actually a, a wine box. This is what you'd buy a case of wine in and you can go to your local grocery store to ask for them or maybe start stocking up on wines ahead of time uh, and then using this, those boxes yourself. But I love these because they can keep glass pieces separated. Um, let's say you have a bunch of bud vases, the flowers will be protected in these little columns and you can remove some of these uh, slat type pieces. So if you have something that's a little bit too large, you can take some of those out while still providing a buffer between those glass pieces. So we're talking bud vases, votives, table number, table number holder, favors, Everything for that one table can go in one box. Now, if you want to take it one step further with this approach, I would say pre-set up what you want that centerpiece to look like, take a photo and slap it on the box. That way when your mom or a member of the wedding party grabs this box and goes, what am I supposed to do? There's like, there's a guided tour. You've made it super easy and literally foolproof. So whether you're going the more simple route or the more complicated route, what you're doing is you're providing instruction on the outside of the box to let people know either what, what's in there or what it's supposed to look like. A little caveat for florals, if you're doing, if you're DIYing larger centerpieces, I do not recommend trying to put them in boxes. I would recommend having a separate vehicle take those. Um, one, because they have to be super temperature controlled, right? You don't want them wilting before you say I do. Um, and two, they need to have plenty of space, especially if they have the little wispy bits. You don't want those breaking or snapping off, so you might need a dedicated vehicle or two to take those safely to your venue. The next thing you might possibly be DIYing would be signs. Um, um, in this particular circumstance, I would say write down on a post-it where this is supposed to go and slap it on the back. And this goes for anything that's too large to fit into a box, 
write down on a post-it where that's supposed to go uh, and make sure it's attached to that. Now, once you have all these items organized, um, whether in bins with a list or in the individual meal kit boxes with a photo and all the post-its slapped to everything too large to fit into a box. Now it's time to go ahead and pull all that together into a couple of central documents that can be used as a checklist for when you're setting up and a checklist for when it's getting torn down. Hence why we created a checklist for this week. So again, if you missed it earlier, it's going to be down uh, in the description box below, but I'm actually going to dig into the vault on this one uh, and share with you my checklist from my wedding. Because not that that's the gold standard, by which to operate or do any of this, because Lord knows I did a little too much DIY, but because it's a good frame of reference and I thought it'd be kind of fun. In addition to that checklist though, I recommend having an overhead, like a bird's eye view of your venue. Most venues will have this overhead for you, um, or you can use an awesome resource like All Seated, one of my favorites. I've talked about it here before on this channel multiple times. It's basically a reception layout tool, uh, a website that helps you with that. Or heck, you can even hand draw it. But trust me when I say taking that extra step to have something like that and marking on it where things are supposed to go is going to make setup go so much more seamlessly. In fact, I'll go ahead and show you mine right now and you can appreciate the crazy with me. <laughs> so here is an overhead look of our reception space. You can see there's layers all around it that then coincide with this master list of what everything is and where it's supposed to be going. What you'll see here is not paragraph after paragraph of description. It's as brief as possible because those doing setup and teardown do not have a of time to read through like seven sentences describing where this is supposed to go. You want to make it very simple, very foolproof. So that way anyone looking at this list would know where item D went. Now I of course took it to the next level and when I was marking all the items and the boxes I would put the letter coinciding with the legend <laughs> and the list on the box or on the post-it on the item. So if anyone was like okay M is right here, Here's the item, it's marked with M, and it's supposed to go there. If you only have a handful of things, of course this level of organization is not necessary, but if you are really balling on a budget and you're DIYing as much as possible and you want to be kind to those doing the setup, I recommend it. Now let's cover a couple of don'ts real quick, okay? One, don't get too big of boxes and do not overload them. We definitely don't want any boxes breaking or falling apart on your wedding day and like damaging or ruining all this stuff that you spent a really long time working on, and we don't want to make it too heavy for those that are doing that setup and tear down for you. Second thing, don't toss in extra stuff or stuff that doesn't have a home. OK, because those that are doing the setup probably won't have enough brain space to figure out how to design on your behalf. Be very clear with where things are supposed to go. And if you don't have a home for it and it's not on the list or it's not on the legend, don't put it in there. It's like adding in an extra ingredient to the meal kit. If it's not in the written recipe, do not include it. And lastly, don't have too high of expectations. If you have too many items or you don't have a large enough setup or it's non-professionals like family members, friends, wedding party that's setting this up for you, you have to manage your expectations accordingly. You guys know I've talked about this multiple times here on this channel. I did not do that. I had too much stuff. I had too high of expectations and it literally exhausted several sweet friends and family members, both during setup and tear down. So do as I say and not as I did. So that's what we have for this week's video, guys. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you found it extremely helpful. Um, whether you're doing a small amount or large amount of DIY, you guys have got this. Just remember you have time to get organized ahead of time and those that are doing the setup for you on your day of, do not. If you like the video, jump on down there, hit the like button and subscribe to this channel for more tips and tricks for the modern day bride. And until next week, bye guys. Mm -hmm.